All right, guys, we're going to do chapter 18, this lecture over gene mutation. What is a mutation? As you can see here, an inheritable change in the genetic material, which means a generally change in the DNA base pairing. Okay, a mutation in a nucleotide. Mutations are the only thing that can change alleles, that can provide allelic variations. The only difference between one allele and the other is changes in nucleotides. Not so many that it actually changes the gene's function, right? If you have lots and lots of mutations, then it may not act at all like it's original, but a little bit of a change. So a couple base pair changes, changes a couple base pairs in the mRNA, which might change an amino acid or two, which could change the conformation of the protein. If it happens to be a pigment, right, pigments just reflect light, reflects light differently, looks like a different color. So a few small changes in nucleotides can change. So a genotypic change to make a new allele results in a phenotypic change, a color change. So sometimes good. Mutations are the foundation for evolutionary change, right? Because of the allelic variation, like I just said. On the other hand, right, mutations can cause lots of diseases. Not always good, not always bad, sometimes neutral. That's what we're going to talk about for the rest of this little lecture capture. <sighs> because many mutations can be harmful, organisms have ways to repair damaged DNA. So in a different lecture capture, we're going to talk about how we can repair mutations so that not all mutations at the nucleotide level in DNA end up causing any problems in RNA or protein because they're fixed. So here's an example of how not all the nucleotide changes result in a change in protein activity. Some do. It depends on where they are. Here we have the wild type, our promoter upstream of the first exon, first intron, second exon. They're pointing out which parts of these exons actually code for the active site of the protein. Here's the protein, the active site shown in red there. We have a mutation in the promoter, which results in null, which means no protein or no function. Right? If we can't get transcription to happen, how do we have translation to make our protein? Protein doesn't exist. If we have a mutation in exon 1 in the active site, again, no protein, no function. Okay, So in this case, there's just no function. The protein's made, but no function. In this case, there's no protein at all. Okay, so still a null mutation results in no activity for one of them because there's no protein to have activity and the other the protein exists no function again in another in the other exon again in an active site bad idea no function if we have a mutation down here in the active site towards the edge it says leaky what does that mean that means you get a little function not complete like wild type but not as bad as not at all if we make a mutation down here in the exon, which shows up in this part of the protein, might change the conformation a little bit, but does not affect function. This one works just like wild type. So it's completely normal. And then here, if we make a mutation in the intron, it shouldn't do anything, right? That's not coding. But look here, it's way at the back, which means it's probably in the splice acceptor or the three prime splice site which means this won't splice out this whole thing would be included that would screw up the total conformation of this protein so that because it's going to include a bunch of extra amino acids or there could run into a stop could be a really short protein in any event we don't know exactly what's going to happen but it's going to have no function so another null mutation now, the difference between a somatic mutation and a germline mutation is in a somatic mutation, that just means a non-reproductive cell type. So any old body cell, right? A regular cell. So like your skin, for example. So they're showing somatic tissue. We're going to pretend like this is in the skin. There's a mutation. 
right? The mutation exists right here in this guy. As this guy grows through mitosis, those cells that are mutated, right, reproduce themselves, and you have this population of mutant cells. But we don't pass these on. If this guy has babies, the babies are fine, right? The little fishy guys, they're normal, right? Because it's only in its skin cell. We don't pass on skin cells. What cells do we pass on? Yeah, the cells in the gonads. If the mutation's only in the somatic tissue, doesn't get passed on. If it is a germline mutation, right, which means in the gametes or in the cells that give rise to the gametes, what would those be? Spermatogonia or oogonia, right? Those guys make the gametes. If there's a mutation there, right, it's going to be a mutation here, and if it's a mutation in one gene, half the chromosomes go to each, half the offspring will carry the mutation in all their cells, right? All the cells carry the mutation because this one single gamete gets together with another gamete and makes, right, that one zygote goes through uh, mitosis, mitosis, mitosis to make all the cells in this guy. So every single one is a mutant. Whereas the other guy, all normal. So the only mutations we pass on for generation to generation are ones that are heritable, happen in the gonads, what we call the germline. Okay? Yay. Let's talk about types or categories of mutations. If this here is our original DNA sequence. This is what we're comparing to. We're only showing one strand. Here's the other strand we're not listing. We're only showing the top strand that we're interested in. Yes, the bottom strand still exists. We're just not looking at it. If we go from a T to a C, we have an alteration in a single codon. Okay, one single codon is changed and base substitution, one single nucleotide, from, one, from T to C is just called a substitution. We substitute one for another. A base insertion is exactly what it sounds like, right? We have GT and we add a T, boink. There's the A, GA, right? We've actually added a nucleotide. This would cause a what? Frame shift. All the codons are off by one, right? This is a new triplet, this is a new triplet, this is a new triplet. If we look, these triplets are no longer the same as these. It alters every amino acid from the mutation down, okay? Same as a base deletion. If we remove the T, that would be this one right there, we remove it again, it changes the frame. Another frame shift mutation happens. Changes all of the amino acids from the mutation down. This is an example using the showing the amino acids. If there was the sequence of a normal gene down here, Right, a frame shift mutation they're showing right here. This is an addition, right? They're showing both sides now of that guy. So that would be happening as an insertion right there, right? If we find our triplets in our original and what the amino acids are coded for, it changes our triplet code, right? That changes all of the amino acids from the mutation forward. We can be a little more specific about our substitutions, right? Substitutions can be a transition, which is a purine, uh, to purine change or pyrimidine to pyrimidine, so same class of type of nucleotide. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back to your 107 stuff. 
right? The different bases are either purines or pyrimidines. So if it's one purine, changes to the other purine, or one pyrimidine, changes to the other pyrimidine, it's considered a transition. A transversion is when you go from a purine to a pyrimidine, or a pyrimidine to a purine. Any one single base pair change as a substitution is also known as a point mutation. Single nucleotide change. Nucleotide change. Okay. Which one occurs more often? Well, here's your answer. It's a transition. Because purine to purine really is just removing or adding some chemical group. If you go back and look at our purines and our pyrimidines, they're very similar. It would be really hard for a transversion to just be from spontaneous uh, change in the nucleotide. That would be, have to be the removal of this guy and the re-adding of this guy. So a transversion is usually caused during replication, whereas a transition can be caused by damage. So those are the point mutations in the DNA. We call those substitutions, transitions, or transversions. What they do to the mRNA and then the protein has a different name. When we are talking about the protein mutations, we have different terms. We never refer to the protein mutation as a transition or a transversion. Why? Because proteins don't have nucleotides. They have amino acids. A change from one amino acid to another is called a missense. Okay, base substitution, which an amino acid changes from one to another. For example, glycine is replaced by phenylalanine. That's a missense mutation. Okay, a nonsense mutation is when a glycine or something else is changed to a stop codon. Right, from an amino acid to nothing or to stop is called a nonsense mutation. Only refers to proteins in the amino acids. We never call DNA nonsense. We never call DNA missense. Right? In DNA, it's a substitution. Right? Transition or transversion. Now, what is a silent mutation? A silent mutation means there was a change at the DNA level in the codon, but if it's in the third position in the wobble and it just changes to one that actually still base pairs is a wobble, then we won't change what amino acid is made. We'll get an RNA, we'll get the same amino acid, right? We get the RNA sequence, yeah, it's a little different, it's mutant, but we get the same amino acid coded for due to the degeneracy, right, the wobble. So usually the third position, and that is a silent mutation because you don't see it at the protein level. There's no change in the protein, but we do know if we sequence the DNA, there was a change in DNA. Here are our examples of the mutations, and we see here in the wild type, right, here's our sequence. We're talking about this codon. This would be the, uh, sorry, this coding region. This would be the codon produced it results in a serine. That's the wild type protein. If we have a missense mutation, what does that mean? Look, it's a C to a T, a G to an A. This would be a transition, right? Results in a change in the codon, which results in a change in the amino acid. That is a missense. It went from serine to leucine. Change, it's a missense. In this case, we have a C to an A, a G to a T. This is a transversion that results in a stop codon, which means no amino acid. That results in a nonsense mutation at the protein level, right? DNA and the protein levels. And then in this case, if we went A to G, T to C, again, another transition changes the sequence. It's UCA, UCG. It's in the wobble position. It still codes for serine. Serine, serine means silent mutation. All right, we're skipping this. Forward, reverse. This is really important for genetics when you're doing 
uh, genetic techniques with Drosophila and other mutational analyses, but we don't have time to go into it. So if you really want to be nerdy, read about it in the book. It is very cool. We are going to skip this again. <sighs> Great stuff. We'll talk about this quickly. This is just our example, right? DNA transcription, translation on the ribosome, make, right? Lou incorporated into the functional protein. Yay, that's how it works. If there's a base substitution here, transcription, ooh, results in a stop codon. What does that mean? What kind of mutation is that? Huh? 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 Nonsense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that halts protein synthesis. Remember, a release protein factor comes in, not a special tRNA. Releases the protein. Now it's a short, truncated, and in this case, non-functional protein because of a one single base pair substitution. We're not going to do this. This is, again, how we can have that a second mutation in a tRNA, which then really screws things up. I'm not going to talk about that. We don't have time to go into it. And then I want you guys to remember these. Okay, let's see. What do we need? We have talked about base substitution, transitions, transversions, insertions, deletions, frame shifts. Uh, ooh, we didn't talk about this guy, but it's true, right? If we delete or insert multiples of three, does not alter the reading frame, would change one amino acid, the one that's deleted or inserted, that would be a missense. Uh, we did not talk about these guys. Again, that's uh, it's totally cool. I wish we could. We didn't talk about this. We didn't talk about that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, we didn't talk about neutral, but we should have. It wasn't one of our examples. That's when the amino acid sequence does change. So we had a missense happen, right? A missense happen. It changed it, but it didn't change the function of the protein. So that's a neutral mutation. It's a missense that ends up being neutral. Um, we didn't really talk about loss of function, but duh, it causes loss of function. Gain of function, ooh, we have a new trait or a new appearance or a protein gets better. We didn't really talk about this too much, but you should understand those. Uh, lethal mutation we didn't discuss, but if it's lethal, what does lethal mean? It means dead, okay, so you should know that. And then we didn't talk about those guys. And so, my little friends, that is pretty much it. We are going to be done with mutations. Please watch the next lecture capture and enjoy the rest of the mutation lecture.